Hey YouTube, Wisconsin Shoe Guy here. Welcome to International Hat Day. Hopefully you can see my hat. It's, uh, uh, the angle on this is always kind of weird, but um, wanted to uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate all the comments that I've been getting. Today I want to talk a little bit about wingtips, uh, just uh, different types of wingtips and uh, what I think of the different brands and the manufacturing uh, and, and different things to look for when you're looking to buy a pair. So uh, first, we'll talk about the short wing. This is uh, an Oxford. Uh, you can tell that because the facing here is closed. This comes together. Uh, and it's a short wing because the wing only goes through about here. Uh, there's another wing behind it and uh, relatively classic there. So that's your short wing. Your next type is your long wing, uh, which the wing goes all the way around to the back. And it's a derby, meaning that it has uh, open facing here. Now your last kind is actually a combination of the two where it's a short wing derby. So just uh, different things to look for there. Obviously the soles, everything can be different. There can be a lot of different variation. Um, so I wanna talk a little bit about them today. So we're gonna start with a comparison of a couple of short wings and then we'll get into some of the long wings. I have a special style here, which is relatively uncommon called an austerity brogue, uh, which I wanna talk about as well. So first, um, this is a uh, Eves and Gray, um, has a, um, and this is a short wing Oxford, uh, has a really nice patina that came from the factory. Um, patina meaning that they color it. So um, I, I read an article recently that says that the um, patina is actually removing color from the shoe and then adding color back in. So it's not just the actual um, dyeing um, as much as it is the way they remove it. And that's part of the art. So, because you can do a lot with texture and so forth when you do that. So, but they've done some coloring along the edges. Um, they've done some polish along the heels and the toes, uh, done a nice job. But how is this as, and you can see that they also uh, painted the sole, which is uh, kind of cool. Um, what uh, what did they do with this shoe though, that, uh, that makes it really good? And, and how does it compare? So um, I wore the shoe for a couple hours today. It's, it's new, I got it yesterday. Um, and so um, I'm not gonna be able to talk about length of wear or anything. But uh, let's, if we just look at the sole here, uh, it's got a little beveled edge here toward the back and then they've uh, sanded it out and really done a nice job with what they call fudging uh, to make it look uh, really super smooth. Um, sometimes uh, brands will go in and they'll do uh, finishing detail uh, with a machine that they, they actually carve out a little trench in here as they do it. The higher brands generally just make it completely flat and then they make a little rounded edge here. Um, now some will also um, cut a notch in the heel. Uh, Alan Edmonds calls this a gentleman's notch um, and that's supposed to make it easier for your pants uh, not to touch, which was more important when we had a full break and the pants actually came down that far. Um, but uh, it's a uh, it's an interesting thing. They've got a nice little carving here in the uh, sole as well. So um, that is the Eves and Gray. This is a Loke uh, Buckingham. This is a, an Eves and Gray Vickers. Uh, Loke Buckingham, uh, different color, obviously. You'll notice the lasts of these two are pretty different. The one on the right has more of a square to it. Uh, not a full square, but a, a rounded square, which they call a chisel last. The one on the left, um, or my right is the, this one, is the uh, almond last. Um, so this is more traditional, this is more modern, this is not square, um, but uh, it does really change the look a lot. And I was at uh, uh, Crockett and Jones uh, this week in New York City, and they actually had pair by pair a lot of shoes where they had them on different lasts, but the shoes looked exactly the same. They did this with a lot of cap toe Oxfords and a cap toe derbies where, you know, the difference between the two shoes was just the last. They just had different variety so that if you have a preference or if one feels better on your feet, uh, you're able to easily find what you're looking for. Now, if we look at these two side by side, uh, you know, the stitch density is um, quite similar. I will say that the um, Loke has pinking, which is these little cuts here, like with a, a little serrated or pinking shears, right? Which is what we had when we were growing up. Um, and the Eves and Gray does not. Um, so they took a little bit of time and made straight edges with it instead of using pinking scissors uh, or machine, uh, which, is, uh, which is a different uh, style. Um, you'll also notice that um, they're both, uh, this is a five eyelet 
and this is actually six. So that means that there's more laces there to do it. Now, um, if you look at these, this is also the, the lacing or the eyelets are equidistant from each other. So it doesn't go in a pattern, it just goes straight. Um, and the uh, Eves and Gray does the same. But we'll look at some of the other brands because um, some of the other brands, and actually here's a good example here with Carmina, um, it's not straight, it actually goes in a curve, which changes the way the laces look when you're wearing it. So um, if I look at the, the edge here, um, this also has the rounded edge and the, um, uh, and the, and the, it's not quite straight. This actually has that carved in pattern here. So there's a little lip on the um, outside by the sole and a little lip in the top uh, on the weld. So um, just another little detail that they call a finishing detail, uh, which uh, Loke took the time to do. Now these are not Loke's top grade. This is Loke uh, 1880, um, which is um, you know one of their top grades. I think it's the third highest, um, but it's um, you know made in England and, uh, and is certainly good year welted, uh, but does not uh, have the hand uh, finishing that uh, some of their higher grades do. Um, now you can see here uh, is where the welt is joined. That welt joined is actually uh, pretty nice. It's not very visible. If you look at the eaves in gray uh, for the same thing, I don't know if you can see it at all, which is another mark of a very high quality Goodyear welted shoe. Yep, nope, you can't find it at all. So those are uh, the short wings. Um, as we get into the, um, the short wing um, uh, derby, uh, this is a vast shoe, which is made entirely by hand. Um, they have a very, very small pinking um, that's cut into the uh, edging here um, and is not on the, uh, the lace lacing face, but uh, these are also, um, uh, this is also straight like, like the others. Um, the, uh, um, the stitch density here is far more significant. Yeah, so I would say these are doing like twice the number of stitches per inch as these are. And in many cases, like here they'll do a single stitch on the top of the brogue and a single stitch on the bottom. Here they have a double stitch on the bottom and a single stitch on the top. Uh, so that's again, that's, that's a stylistic thing, but uh, definitely um, uh, harder to do. Now, uh, when it comes to the welt itself, this is a hidden channel welt, so you can't actually see it. Um, um, and, uh, but you can see the top. And if I look at the top stitch density, and this may be hard to see on the video, uh, but I can tell you that the, the stitch density on the VAS, which is made entirely by hand and not on a machine, is easily twice what it is, uh, maybe even three times, three stitches for every one here on the uh, Eves and Gray. And, um, uh, probably two to one on the look. Um, I mean, the look is also, you know, pretty tight, but uh, it, there's still a, a marked difference there. So, um, and and obviously it's it's a little difficult to to compare, but I will tell you that all of these shoes cost less than five hundred dollars. Uh, the um, I was able to get these on sale uh, because they're shell cordovan, so they're normally not under five hundred. But uh, I was able to get one of those once in a lifetime kind of super sales that uh, allowed me to do it. And the uh, Carminas um, were actually uh, made to order, um, but I was able to get a, um, a sale on those as well, which is the only reason why they're they're included in this group as well. So um, that's those. Now let's take a look at this. This is a Meerman long wing. And let's start comparing the way these are made with some of the other long wings. So I think the easiest one to do is to take the Meerman and the Carlos Santos and look at them side by side. As I look at them, the stitch density is remarkably close, but on the Meerman, it's really hard to see where the stitches are. You can see holes there but it's not, you have to really look carefully and I gotta make sure that my bifocals can actually see it, which is a pain in the neck. But um, uh, they're, they're, they actually have a groove in the welt um, that the stitches are in, which is uh, it's kind of different. Um, all the others, um, they just have the, the stitch going from one to the other, so that's different. Now this is a, an open channel welt and this is a closed channel welt, um, which is uh, also different. 
Now, when you look at the actual stick, stitch density on the upper, um, the Carlos Santos is easily twice of uh, that of the Meerman. The Meerman is still very good, um, but uh, yeah, this is this is crazy good. Um, so we'll uh, we'll keep that one here. And while I was talking about stitch density, I might as well look at it against the Vass. And I'm going to say that this Carlos Santos is uh, this is really really close, but I'm going to say that that is almost as uh, as as dense as the Vass. So um, I'll, I'll put some pictures on my Instagram of that so, so folks can see it. So now let's look at Carmina. So we're looking at Carmina compared to the Carlos Santos. And I'm going to say that the stitch density is about the same. Now what's interesting is this is a rubber sole versus a uh, leather sole. Um, but, you know, the construction is, is still very, very similar. Um, and you can see here the, the stitch line on the bottom is, is quite as visible as it is on any of these others. So again, if you look at it compared to the uh, eaves in gray, there's a, there's a big difference. The, um, the rubber sole is much denser, so uh, provides a little bit of something to look at. So, but if we look at it compared to a, another brand, now you start seeing things a little bit more lined up, right? So this is the uh, Alden uh, 979 compared to the Carmina. Um, and I don't remember, I think it's an 835. Um, and those, uh, those are pretty much pound for pound identical uh, when it comes to the top stitch and the bottom stitch. It's actually a little bit denser on the Carmina than it is on the Alden, uh, which will make all the Alden fans out there furious because they, they love the way that they do their soles. Uh, you'll see that the number of nails in the uh, Alden uh, heel um, is also really, really high. So this has, you know, maybe 14, 15 nails. Uh, when I go into uh, the eaves and gray, you're looking at seven. Uh, when you're looking at the Carlos Santos, you're looking at maybe 10. And when you're looking at the, um, the Meerman, you're looking at nine. Um, now the sole on the Loke is very different because it's got a different shape sole. Uh, but this still only has five. So something different there. We'll leave, move that over here and we'll leave, use this as the model that we compare against. And now let's compare on an Allen Edmonds. Now you'll notice that the, the stitch depth on the Alden is not nearly what it is on the Allen Edmonds. Uh, now the Allen Edmonds is in a JR sole. Um, so there is a, a difference there. Uh, you'll also see that the Allen Edmonds, which is true to form with many Allen Edmonds, the stitching is not clean, right? They're, they're, it pulled out of the trench that they dug a little bit over here. And, um, you know, there, but on the rest of the shoe, it looks completely fine. So just kind of ugly right there, um, but uh, nothing that'll actually affect the life of the shoe um, or the wear. Now, when I look at the actual stitch density, um, the stitch density is about twice as much on the Alden as it is on the Allen Edmonds. And candidly, I think this is because Allen Edmonds feels like their glue holds the uh, soles on uh, better than the stitching will. And so they just don't feel it's a priority for the life of the shoe. And, uh, you know, they're putting out 3,000 shoes a day. So for them to be able to, to get more shoes out faster, um, some of these details matter a lot less because at the end of the day, if it doesn't hurt the life of the shoe, and you know, you keep your shoes for 20 years and you look at that stuff once when they're brand new, uh, the overall impact is, is relatively low. Now let's take a look at the nail pattern here um, on the heel compared to the, uh, the Vass. Uh, two things, first, <laughs> look at the size of the heel. These shoes are the same size, so why is the heel so different? because VAS actually hand coordinates the heel. This, instead of being a 360 degree welt, is a uh, 270 degree welt. Now their stitch trench is much smaller, obviously. You can't even see the stitches, they hammered it shut. Uh, but the, um, the heel itself, they've carved so that it really fits the edge of the, of the shoe, where all then they have this edge around it and, and they go around the shoe there. Now, Part of that is long wing versus short wing, right? So the short wings are a more elegant shoe and uh, not considered um, you know, big and clunky. Uh, the name that a lot of people use for the long wings is gunboats uh, because it kind of looks like a boat the way it's got a, an edge around the bottom. Um, and uh, so the clunky is good. But if we just look at nails, this has maybe 14 nails, as I said before. 
and the VAS has uh, three types of five, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 22 nails. So um, they do a good job. They keep them in clusters. There's three, 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 and then there's one on either side of that, and then five across the, the, the rubber sole there, where you see that the Alden has the two on the sole. So um, very big difference. Actually, those aren't even nails. That's just like some sort of spike. So um, a different design, clearly. These are JR soles, which is the same sole manufacturer as on the Allen Edmonds. But um, again, the, the, the way to look at it is very different. And Allen Edmonds, I mean, they've got their 11, 12, 13 nails. So um, not, not bad, but it's a uh, different, uh, different design for sure. So anywho, as we, uh, as we look, clearly, you know, there's a difference between them, but there's also some really, really good reasons to have multiples. Um, each of them has a little bit difference in how far the wing goes up on the shoe. You'll see that. That is a big difference in design. And that's important. If you have really, really big fight feet, you want the, the wing to come up further on the foot than if you have really short feet. Because if you have big feet, the wing can make it look, your foot look smaller. Whereas if you have really short feet, a short wing can make it look longer, uh, which is, uh, you know, something that, that folks want. So uh, some differences in style. You can see this comes, this part, the, the, the wingy part comes up a lot further than here. Here it's it's barely up at all. It's almost like a U cap, but it, it has a little W there. Um, and then more traditional sides um, for these. Um, so anyway, so that is wingtips. I hope you find it uh, beneficial and happy International Hat Day. Take care.